I just got done watching a video about thoracic lateral motion and pelvic vertical twist. That's all a bunch of fluff. It's just the same stuff over again. But today we're going to watch one of the most traditional golf swings out there that I think you can benefit from adapting a few of these. But don't do this without a coach. And don't think watching YouTube videos can make you a star player. It can't. This is just for educational purposes. But stick with me about the most traditional golf swing out there today. Lion Golf Academy members, welcome back. Benji Lee on the screen. Now I know that this layout can be a little bit boring, so I've got a little story to tell you. This lady goes to a doctor and says, Doc, I was playing golf today and I got stung by a bee. The doctor says, where'd you get stung? The lady says, well, it's between the first and second hole. And the doctor says, well, you gotta narrow your stance. So watch out for those bees, people, and check the width of your stance. So let's get started with Minji Lee. So Minji has one of the most solid moves out there. It's very simple, it's very traditional. And a couple of things I want you to try to emulate in your setup, a couple of things that she does very well in her setup is to set up very neutral now this is one thing i am a huge fan of is if we draw this in yellow we can see that that club shaft goes right through her hands right through the center of her chest now what she has done is she has basically told her body that this is the bottom of my circle so the bottom of her circle right now is going to be where her hand position is now she adjusts that slightly at impact because she increases her right tilt to help her hit up on the ball but it's always going to be in that center now if we erase those lines what you can see is the grip you can see those lines on her fingers are also guess where they're pointing they're pointing to that center of her chest so everything is center center remember we've got a big circle to work around I'd rather you have a center of the circle here than off over to the left side or off over to the right side remember just don't go and change your setup and expect to hit it like her her setup formed her swing and your swing is formed by your setup so I guarantee you for those four presses out there you need excess tilt you need to fall back you need to create something to get that club head to reach center at impact so don't mess around with your setup until you go see somebody this video is for education purpose and cause and effect so let's take a look at her setup on the right side of the screen we can see that the center of the heels do go right through that intersecting point between her lower plane line and her spine angle which is great that means she is centered around again guess where that thing is centered the center of her body which is also where everything is connected to in her setup you can see that she's trying to just establish one neutral center and swing around that center and just for reference we're going to keep that right brace line to see how she moves around it that impact line where her left knee should get there first and then hang back as she hits up on it and we got a little box around her head to see any crunching down or if she stays neutral. So let's take this to the midway point of her swing. And what we'll start to notice is a nice wide one piece turn. And this is pretty normal for most tour players. And we know it's wide because look at how straight those two arms are at midway point. So we stop it right here and we can draw almost a perfect triangle because everything is staying out and remember it's staying connected to again that center point where she started we can see the hands relieving some pressure club face is toe up in the sky which is good because she's starting to roll her hands slightly open and because her hands have come off of that lower plane quicker she is actually getting her left tilt a little bit higher sooner but she will rectify this and she does this for a reason which is her downswing motion to help her strike the ball very hard with those athletic legs let's keep moving back to about three quarters of the way through her backswing and we see see the arms are going up to that secondary plane line once we get closer to her full turn you can see those arms definitely get much higher than they should have been if this was a paper cut swing on her setup now this is where her individuality comes in but also because she has to create some room she has to get some separation between her hands and her body because of a slight move she does an impact but I want to show you where she gets all her power from and her consistency in terms of where the arm position is we can see that club shaft is really right on her back heel line it's not quite connected to her center point but it's pretty close left side of the screen we can see we have a nice shoulder turn here the club is nowhere near to parallel with that shoulder turn i know that most amateurs out there watching this might get half of her shoulder turn and your club is probably pointing over here which is why you probably don't hit it very consistently because your arms are taking over the golf swing and in order to hit that golf ball in 0.2 seconds from that top swing with mostly arms it is just a cat and mouse game and sometimes you do catch a mouse but most of the time it's not going to work out for you so check your turn and check your arm position at the top make sure that club shaft 
left is nowhere past your turn. On the left side of the screen, we can see her right brace line, which is this line right over here where the X is. And what's happening now is she is forming her power V. And this is an old school terminology that you probably don't hear anymore because of this whole shallowing thing that's going on right now. But this creates a little V that you now have transferred your weight correctly to the right side. And just like you're throwing a ball, right side to left side. So you can see most of the upper body is over that right foot. And some of the amateurs do it too much. We see some of the amateurs getting way over here where the whole body's hanging over this side and the, and the hips jut out underneath to try and support that. But if you want to check yourself at home, make sure your left shoulder for the righties out there get over that right foot. And now not only is she getting her weight distribution on that right side, but remember this is a driver. So now she has changed her tilt. Now, if you change your tilt, basically your hand path is going to work where that tilt is. So if she just swing from here, her hand path is going to be working perpendicular to that line. So her hand path now is projected to be up as she strikes the golf ball. It's probably not going to be that much up, but it is going to tend to work up. Right side of the screen, what we're going to do here is draw a triangle where her arms and butt of the club is. And what we're going to do is draw a straight line from that butt of the club straight through the center of the triangle. And that is where her initial hand path Path should travel if she's able to maintain her spine angle. One thing that can deviate this is if you crunch on that right side and you get excess tilt falling back down to earth, your hands will go along for that ride too. But this is a swing I think that amateurs should try and copy and not the shallowing swing because that is for high quality players, high caliber players, not us cow potatoes that watch these videos in hopes to cure ourselves in one lesson. It's not going to happen. But let's take a look at that right side. Look at the right hand, how it just wants to follow that line so it's going right down that line just like it is planned and what's causing that is she's now pulling that triangle straight down to her lower path in that same angle she's doing a really good job of staying in her posture on the left side of the screen remember that weight distribution on the right side she changed her tilting she's still in that tilting so everything is done with a purpose we can see that knee tilt adjusted to allow that to occur now this is serving a couple purposes here that knee tilt is excessive right now but as she gets near the golf ball this is that one little move that separates her. So let's just clear up all these lines to get rid of that. So let's redraw that knee tilt line and see how this works. But the right side of the screen, we can notice something happening here and let's draw this one in Barney purple. We're gonna draw this up here. We can see that her hips are working towards the golf ball slightly. Now this is one reason I believe that her hands have to get much higher because she knows, this is an old school term here, but she shaft humps that golf ball. And when you do that, you start to lose real estate in this area. So if you have higher hands, you can come a slightly steeper with your hands and have a little bit more area to work with. Now we know that we get a little shaft humping. Let's back up a little bit and we're gonna put a little box around her belt buckle and watch what happens to her that's a horrible box but watch what happens to her belt buckle watch that belt buckle work its way up and we'll redraw where it is slightly before she strikes the ball we can see how much it's moved up but the good thing is now her tilt to stay back where she was her tilt has increased so now her hand path should from this point work its way along that secondary barney line and let's take a look as it goes through one too. So you can see the hand path <clears throat> is swinging up and this was all because she stored her weight correctly and basically hung back with her upper body to get that excess tilt to allow her hand path to swing up but she did not fall back. She's still driving with her lower body. So right side of the screen, we're gonna see how much real estate she ended up losing. We can see all that. And if we draw a little box around her hand, what we're gonna do is go back to her setup and see if they're relative to each other. So let's back it on up and we can kind of see where the hands are started and where they're finished. And if you were to take a little measuring tool, I, I think I have a measuring tool here, but I'm not gifted enough to know how to use it. But I would say that that separation is about the same separation between the two, give or take a few. So let's clear these lines and watch the hips on the left side and the right side. So you see that belt buckle moving up. Look at the right side of the screen. Everything is crunching down and moving up. So she is still pulling her core. Now remember her upper body wants to go down while while her lower body wants to go up and then you compress right where you need it to be compressed right in the center so all that action there is building up tension one is going up the other one's going down and right when you strike it that's where everything releases and you'll notice her hips watch when she strikes the ball to past impact, she doesn't move her hips anymore. She drives up and opens her hips and here they actually recoil 
and close back down slightly. So it just shows you, you don't need to keep turning and turning and turning. This is the more traditional approach. And look at that right leg. The right leg is pushing up. She's delivered all the power and then the hands can release. And watch where the hands release on the left side. First sign of the club is right on that upper plane line. So this is matching perfectly. And when she finishes, her hands might be a little bit higher just because she got them higher. But it's still, if you look at that club shaft in relation to her spine angle, it is 90 degrees and that is what we're looking for. So she's just rotating around the center pivot point, which is how she's set up in the beginning. So let's back up at, at impact on the left side of the screen. Once we strike that golf ball, we can see the hands are right in front of the chest. We've got a slight forward press that happened. What you'll notice here is look at that club shaft is connected to the left arm here. And then we go one frame and now it's connected to the right arm. So that means that club head is past equal amounts in her circle. She's not flipping at it. She's not throwing her hands at it. You can see it's a slight release. That club face is slightly closed past impact. And then look, it's still slightly closed. And there's that release. Right hand goes over left. And we can see this nice crisscross effect. And then you just come on through and she meets her impact line beautifully with the shoulders but you'll notice that the hips are nowhere near that impact line because remember she drove her hips before she struck the ball and then her upper body pulled her hips the rest of the way there is no excess turn here it is just a beautiful simplistic motion and i pray she doesn't change it or try to steal some yardages by adopting these new age swing theories but i hope that helps you i hope you enjoyed this i hope you guys have a safe halloween i'll see you next time fairways and greens